We're going to continue looking at Owe, uh, the outside linebacker that the Ravens have drafted, edge player. At pick 31, I think it's important, at least in my mind, to point out what's riding on this pick. What was given up to to get a uh, second first-round selection. You gave up uh, a Pro Bowl tackle, albeit for one year. Um, yeah, I'm not passing judgment on that decision as such, but you did give that up. And you gave up a second-round pick. Uh, the Ravens also passed on Ojolari, and they passed on Tryon. And obviously that means they like this guy better, but he needs to be better than both of them. Um, they also passed on Creed Humphrey. Uh, I have a hard time believing uh, he's a better football player uh, than Creed Humphrey. Uh, okay. Uh, here he is standing at the line, and he's going to drop into coverage. The two times I've seen him drop, I think he looks very uncomfortable. He's watching the quarterback. Presumably he's the bottom half of a cover two to this side. Split field sort of coverage, but he turns his back to the quarterback and runs as if he's in man here, and he's chasing the tight end. Looks like he's a head up six over this tight end here. He's got contain. Uh, Penn State buys pretty hard on this zone away, um, but he's got to keep his eyes to this boot here. Pretty good, fa or good fake, actually, by the quarterback and by the running back, but watch how quickly he turns his eyes to the back here thinks about chase and I don't know how they coach him up in terms of coverage if the if the back if the tight end leaks out uh, but he bites that play fake really really hard he has no idea the quarterback's got the football he's going to exchange gaps with the uh, three tech here you see him uh, leaning and very high off the ball playing the run uh, he's not going to be asked to take on a ton of double teams outside for the Ravens, but we're just watching how he's playing here. And this is consistent. He's consistently high off the football, uh, allowing guys into him. Watch it again. We mentioned last night that he just doesn't appear at all times to have a plan coming off the line. Um, looks like he's reading the the tackle here with this kind of slow play uh, or setting up a spin move inside um, but then he sort of just shoulders into him doesn't use his hands the tackle just engulfs him uh, they got a 20 point lead it's third and seven he's got a one-on-one -on -one. Um, what you'll notice is the the ball's been snapped the, office, the offensive line are in their pass set. He's still got both hands in the dirt. Stands straight up. See how long it takes him, not just to off the ball, but to get out of that stance. Uh, I don't see the juice. Even when he gets off the ball pretty well, I don't see that explosiveness off the ball. This is Shaka Tony opposite him. Again, versus Rutgers. All three D linemen off the ball. He still uh, has his hand in the dirt here. Uh, offensive line in their set. Ball's been snapped. Still in his set. Still in it with his hand in the dirt. These guys are getting their second foot down. And he stands straight up. Grabs the head of the tackle there. You see that? And he's able to get off that block. Kind of find the uh, runner. But watch. He kind of whiffs here in space. This is encouraging. A um, little bit late off the ball. Sees the guard and tackle go away. He's going to squeeze right away. You can see he's explosive off that outside foot. Eyes to the backfield. Takes on the puller. Finds the ball carrier. Understands that he's got help on the outside here. Sheds. Makes the play. Does a nice job on the edge here, splitting the difference between the QB and the uh, pitch. First, he's going to squeeze. He kind of reads this nicely, I think. Once the quarterback commits and gets rid of the football, he's flat down the field. Uh, and pretty nice there in pursuit and making the play. Here he is against the tackle, Ohio State. You see that tackle gets out of his stance in a hurry. That's just great. But you see he's got this ability to pretty consistently 
win with power. You see him swat the hands away. He's really got the, the tackle um, <laughs> off balance there. And as I said, that's not unusual. I do see that. like to see us, him swim and clear that inside arm. Uh, he gets jammed up in here somehow. But, yeah, you do see a jolt in his hands routinely. Clearly, the Ravens like this guy. They did take him, again, over Tryon, Ojolari, uh, and, and they put the um, value, the edge pick, uh, or perhaps even the player, uh, over a center. Um, so... This, this pick needs to hit for the Ravens. Jeremiah had us taking away th three, four weeks ago, and that didn't seem right to me then. Uh, I saw him draft, uh, draft Eve saying, um, again, projecting in his final mock away to the Ravens. And pretty close to what he said was this guy um, doesn't have any production, but he ran a 4-3 and he plays hard. And that doesn't seem like a Ravens pick to me. Um, so there's a lot riding on this. It's important to remember, I think, that uh, we have to balance out the whole class, right? There's two more days in the class. See how it all feels at the end of it. And uh, uh, I'm also reminded that they might bring in an edge guy. He is developmental. Uh, I'm reminded of Tyus Bowser, uh, a great athlete we took in the second round. And Tyus had special traits, too. I mean, he was special in coverage in college. And I think he, sh he showed himself more versatile generally in college. And Tyus flashed early, but ultimately it took two and a half, three years, for whatever reason, uh, for things to sort of really click for him. Um, and a lot, of the, a lot of the talk is, the, is of the sort that Wink... We'll put him in a position to succeed. Well, Wink does that for all his players. You know, it's on the player ultimately as well. Um, but clearly the Ravens like him, and uh, we'll keep watching. We'll keep doing it. We'll, we'll probably do another video on him.